Plug this in. Good morning and welcome to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. Oh. Hi, <laughs> good morning and welcome to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela and guess who has crossed over into the 40s? Yes. Yesterday was my birthday, so I am rocking my birthday girl shirt. Um, you know, because we can't, we got to keep this party going all month long. So uh, it is my birthday. Well, it was yesterday, but we're going to say it was today. And uh, we just got a lot to talk about today. There's just so many things going on in the world that um, we just, we're going to touch on. And so um, I'm, I'm really interested in looking at some of the things that are happening from the standpoint of my generation, which is uh, I'm Gen X. And uh, we're also going to have a millennial in the room. And she's going to talk about her perspective on um, all the things that are going on. So as you know, we've got things like Donald Trump is, uh, what, Time Magazine Person of the Year? I think they messed up. I think it was supposed to be me. I think it was supposed to be me. Um, we also, <laughs> Kanye is now out of the hospital. Um, I mean, we just got all kinds of stuff going on and um, lots to talk about. So, um, so just stay with us. Join the conversation. Give us a call, 678-613-5857. Leave messages, um, and we're going to have a good conversation today. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be right back on the live exchange. I think I unplugged something. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Oh, somebody asked me. My life next year. I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have a place first. And that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he got us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungeon, and I am second. Ten thousand what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food stall box, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increasing. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving. Better is that uh, we fix the sound. Yes, Tony, I am all alone today. Solo, solo bolo. Well. For, for the time being. I'm going to plug this back in so I can start doing my prep stuff. Um, but I just wanted y'all to hear me for a second. <laughs> well, it's too low now, um, Robert Pierce, because I um, unplugged it. But I'm about to plug it back in. Tell me if it's too low after I unplug it. Let me see. I mean, after I plug it back in. A thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Hey, Teddy. Why is investing important? Most people have goals that they're trying to reach in life that has something to do with growing their assets. That's a problem that we have in our community because we don't take enough risk to actually grow our assets to meet our expectations. So how does Paris Capital help me? I see myself as a world-class investor. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm here to bring a transparent, low-fee strategy so people understand what they're getting into when they invest. A dollar today is not worth the same as a dollar tomorrow. You can go to my website at parishcapital.com or call us at 800-618-1. Ignore the noise, stay focused, and prosperity be unto you. Vince Lombardi once said that it's hard to be aggressive when you're confused. Some of us think that taking our lives to the next level, both personally and professionally, is a confusing and complicated process. Guess what? It's not, and I can prove it. My book, Truisms, will show you how... I appreciate y'all giving us uh, updates on the sound. I really like that, because... You guys are, like, helping me. Um, I don't really have nothing to say. I'm going to plug it back in, but I just wanted to thank you all for that. <laughs> 
actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids, and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. And lead the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. George, y'all need anything else? Station, station Network. Yeah. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and uh, guess what? Um, it, yes, it was my birthday um, yesterday. This is my birthday week, my birthday month, Sagittarius in the house. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we've got a lot to talk about today. And yes, I did. I had, I've had a series of different types of birthday parties that have taken place. I see Robert Pierce is asking, is there a birthday party this weekend for Dr. Pamela? Yes, there is. There is a birthday party this weekend for Dr. Pamela in Nassau, Bahamas. <laughs> so... Come meet me out there in Nassau, and we are going to have an awesome time in the Bahamas. So, uh, yeah, come join me. The party is not over yet. In fact, for those of you who really want to, we can party every single month of this next year. December 7th, January 7th, February 7th, March 7th. Let's just keep this thing going because this is year 40, people. Year 40. Now, and, and it's interesting because we're going to be looking at... Um, life from the perspective of a Gen Xer like myself. And then um, we have a guest coming in, and she is a millennial. And, and it's crazy because I was just talking about millennials on the last show. I just said, like, people are still born in the 80s? Like, people were born in the 80s? Uh, well, I, and I'm not even sure if she was born in the 80s or the 90s. It might have been somewhere in between. But um, they are our next uh, set of leaders. And, you know, it's really, I think it'll be a great idea to kind of hear where we're, you know, what's coming up, what, you know, who, what kind of mindset we can expect. We have a lot of misconceptions and stereotypes about our millennial generation. And so I think it's a really um, a fair thing to do to allow one of them to come in and talk about that, uh, their perspective on life and all kinds of things. There's a lot um, that, that's going on. And so we are going to be, you know, having that conversation, looking at life from my perspective as a, as a who, who are the Gen Xers in the house? I know we got some Gen Xers who are, who are paying attention. If you are a Gen Xer, give me some thumbs up for Generation X. Generation, now, so the thing about our generation, you know, I don't know if you all are aware, but they actually do research on the different generations and the characteristics and why we are the way we are. Oh, I see a Gen Xer in the house all right now. Yes. <laughs> and, and I don't know if you guys know it, but the Gen Xers is the generation that was pretty much abandoned and hated <laughs> by our parents and the baby boomers. We are the first um, generation who, um, you know, the latchkey kids, uh, you know, we, we were the ones where birth control became a big deal. You know, all of a sudden, everybody wanted to get on birth control because they did not like kids, right? I don't know if you all remember that, but, but in the 70s, it was like, oh, dang, we, we need to get on birth control. We don't want kids. We don't want kids. And then... And then, remember the 80s, the, the, the movies about evil kids? You know, um, w w give me some names of some evil kid movies. We got Chucky, we got The Dolls, we got Firestarter. I mean, all of these movies about evil kids. And so our generation is, um, it, it was really that generation that was hated. Let's see. Robert Pierce is uh, born in 1968. You are a Gen Xer. 
woo woo, you're in the house with us. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so this was the generation where, you know, because Robert Pierce, right before, you, right after you were born, it was like, okay, dang, we need to get some birth control. <laughs> That's when that became, you know, a, a regular thing. And so, um, and then, so then we had that in the 80s. And then in the 90s, we had, um, as a result of how we were treated in the 70s, we weren't wanted. Um, in the 80s, we were like the children of the corn. And in the 90s, a bunch of us got pregnant and out of wedlock. And, and, and then we had like the rise of uh, gang violence. And we had all of these things happening because we were like latchkey kids. And, and, you know, but you know what we're doing, though, as a generation? What we're doing now as a generation is now we are those helicopter parents. <laughs> and you know why? Because we were the latchkey kids. Because we were the, the, the kids that were, you know, not really wanted. And so, and I'm not speaking like our parents literally didn't want us. I'm speaking from a, a larger societal standpoint. Like how do we control the birth of all these children? Um, but, but look at us now. We are the parents that are carting our kids around to all of these different activities. They've got to be in soccer and ballet, and, and they've got to go to after-school programs. We established after-school programs because our parents made us go home by ourselves and, lock, you know, and let ourselves in the house. And so, so there's, it, it's just interesting to look at the progression of how one generation has impacted the next generation. And so, um, but anyway, that's, that's my whole spiel on, on, uh, on generation, um, you know, uh, on Gen X anyway. Uh, but now we're going to get into some trending topics. Primary election. Lack of diversity. Yes, prices. Michael Black. Trending topics. Okay, so, um, trending topic. Uh, Time Magazine's Person of the Year. I don't know if you all have heard this. Um, Dr. Pamela Antoinette. <laughs> it's not, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it's Donald Trump. Time Magazine Person of the Year. And, uh, you know, it's so funny because I was having this conversation uh, with some friends and, you know, like, how, how, you know, we're all shocked and appalled. Like, what the heck? What is going on? What kind of world do we live in? Um, but you know what? Uh, just like anything else, um, we kind of concluded that this has to be a political move. It has to be a political move. Uh, we know that, that Donald Trump hates the media, although he uses the media quite well. Um, but he hates the media, and so perhaps this is a, a move for Time Magazine to get in good with the, the incoming president. And this is their way of, you know, saying, hey, you know, we're, we're going to make sure we're on your good side. We're going to give you, I mean, because I could, I could see myself behind the table, you know, with these conversations and hearing this happen. I can hear this happen, like, look. It's political. If we put this person on the cover of Time Magazine, this is what we're going to get out of it. Um, if we put this person in front of Time Magazine, you know, and so it's it's a political conversation. Um, Robert Pierce says, uh, I felt that there was no better person. Uh, please elaborate on that. Um, I, and I could see, uh, you know, where that view would come, um, depending on what the expected outcome is. Um, but, but yeah, it, it is... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just wonder how I feel about that. And when we, when our guest comes in, I would, I would love for her to um, chime in on that as well. Um, but, but yeah. So that is our trending topic um, for for this hour, anyway. Um, Donald Trump cover of Time Magazine. It was a mistake. Um, I've contacted Time Magazine. They're going to make the correction, and tomorrow you'll see me on the cover as the, as the person of the year. <laughs> That's not narcissistic at all, is it? <laughs> all right, we'll be right back on the live exchange. <laughs> and so a new American industry has been born. Sensation Station Network. Okay, so five tacos of cheese and a large soda. That's $10,012. Please drive around. 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Great leaders aren't born. 
They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. Listen, as a hiring manager, I've got to tell you, the best job candidate isn't always the typical candidate. Sometimes they're a grad of life. Meet the grads of life. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Sometimes the best candidates aren't the ones you're used to. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Listen, as a hiring manager, I've got to tell you, the best job candidate isn't always the typical candidate. Sometimes they're a grad of life. Meet the grads of life. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Sometimes the best candidates aren't the ones you're used to. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. All right, welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and today we're just talking mess. We're just talking. We're talking mess because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. No, we're not talking mess. We're analyzing the mess that's happening um, throughout the world. There's mess. There's great stuff. There's, you know, but um, so so Donald Trump was selected as Time Person Magazine of the Year, and I just have to respond to some of these comments. Some people are saying, well, what about our president who's actually leaving office? You know, why not have him as Person of the Year? I totally, I'm with you on that. Um, and I'm seeing Robert Pierce is saying, you know, so... Basically, in a nutshell, it sounds like he's saying that in spite of everything, all of the odds, you know, just being kind of, you know, this, this person who stepped in, became president, and stirred up the country and got all of this conversation going, uh, you know, uprooted all of the tension that has already existed among a lot of groups, and has brought it all to the forefront. And so... Um, you, know, you know, so I can see in that sense of, you know, being some kind of person of the year, um, <laughs> because you certainly had a, a, a profound impact on the, the flow of this country. I don't know if it would necessarily be a positive person of the year, but that would be, um, you know, and again, that's my opinion. I know there are some who, you know, do not have any problems with Donald Trump and, you know, all of that, but, but, um. But that's, you know, it is what it is. And so there are um, another, you know, there's there's a, I just read about it right now. It just came up at, um, for those of us who are in Georgia, um, Georgia Southwestern um, is on lockdown right now because there is a shooting um, off campus, but close enough to campus where they're on, um, on lockdown. And so as you know, just a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week, um, the, the Ohio State University had a shooting on their campus as well, um, and that was um, not a shooting, I'm sorry. It was um, an attack in which a guy wielding a knife went around stabbing people, you know, hit people with a car. Um, and, you know, of course, for me, because this is my home, um, you know, college campuses, what I do is I, um, I'm a college professor, and I'm in the classroom, and we are sitting ducks. You know, it is a very vulnerable position to be in. I, I, you know, I, I'm at the front of the classroom teaching and I can gauge 
um, kind of what's going on with the students that are in front of me. I don't know, though, necessarily if I've got a disgruntled student in class um, um, until they start to show it. And, and people have different ways of showing that. You know, um, we have, uh, you know, people who have some serious, um, you know, issues with rage, um, anger management issues, uh, you know, things of the like. And we're not necessarily... Um, receiving thorough training as academics, and this is not necessarily just where I work, but you know across the board, it's not a standard practice for us to get training on how to recognize these kinds of things um, and how to how to you know quell situations that can turn into something that's very dangerous. Um, and so you know that's something that I'm seeing as you know in the larger scope of higher education, um, you know, needs to be resolved. You know, the, the, in the, in the K-12 world, um, they're taking measures. They're having, you know, security at the door. Parents have to buzz in. Um, people are getting very specific hands-on training about how to respond, which is awesome, you know. And, um, and, and you know, there's nothing that's foolproof. There's always, you know, uh, you know risk. But in higher ed, um, there is a real need to, to tackle this situation because, you know, like I said, I mean, it's we're talking about open campuses. Um, anybody can walk in. Anybody can have issues. Um, you know, just at, I, I believe it was USC a few weeks ago, a, a disgruntled student um, shot a professor, and the professor was killed, and, and he was upset, um, you know, from what I last heard over grades. And, um, you know, we had a, um, a faculty meeting in um, Mississippi um, several years ago in which a faculty member who did not get tenure open fire on her colleagues in the room, you know, and so th there's a real problem there, and, and, and there, there really does need to be some, um, some deliberate action. Now, the, now I, you know, being in the higher ed world and going to conferences and such, I happen to know that there is definitely, the conversation is happening, you know, by, by far, but the thing is that it is an individual campus decision um, as far as what measures are going to be taken. So it sounds like The Ohio State University had measures in place. They had an alert system that went out to students, faculty, and staff. They had a team of medics that were ready to go, ready to deploy um, when something happened. You know, so it sounds like they had a very solid plan in place that was executed quite well. That's not the case, um, I would say, at a majority of the colleges and universities that I know of and, and, and with the colleagues that I speak to about what they have been um, trained to do. In fact, there is no training. And, and I don't even know how much I want to publicize this because I'm basically exposing the fact that we're wide open, you know, we're, we're wide open and that really needs to be addressed. There have been some small measures that have been taken, but not quite enough. Uh, according to Diamond, she's saying it's the drugs, um, especially the new drugs. College kids are still kids um, and they need more medicine, you know, and that's another thing. Um, there were definitely more drugs that were given to kids for different, um, you know, different issues like ADHD, um, you know, we were more willing in the previous generation to to medicate our kids. And that's a very controversial issue in and of itself. Uh, but one thing that I do know is that in other countries like Europe, they have moved away. Um, Europe is a continent. I get it. I, yeah, I said that wrong. But you know what I mean? But other, other countries in Europe um, are less willing to to medicate their kids and and they go they opt for the behavioral therapy and they found that, that the behavioral therapy is actually effective and it's working and so um you know so i think you have a good point there diamond that you know maybe we want to um you know kind of look at the medications and and whether or not that is absolutely what we need to use or if there are in some cases um some behavioral things that we can do with kids, um, because these kids turn into teenagers, and these teenagers turn into college students, and um, and so yes, it, it is all you know uh, connected. Um, with that said, we're going to go into the research. In the interest of science, 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 science. science. My apologies, Diamond. Diamond is, has corrected me. Diamond is a man. I made an assumption. Sorry about that. But the science um, that I'm going to present to you today, um, we have, so I know many of you have heard of midlife crisis, right? Raise your hand. Hit like, hit love. We've heard of midlife crisis. The interesting thing about midlife crisis is that I heard a lot about midlife crisis when I was 
in my 20s, you know, we would, and it was, it was always characterized by, you know, some guy who would go buy a red sports car and go get himself a young woman, right? That is pretty much the characterization of, um, <laughs> of a midlife crisis. Like, he's, he's got to find himself again, right? Um, so, so while that is partly true and has, has been, you know, the case, um, and, and by the way, midlife crisis has traditionally been, you know, kind of pinned um, in the 40s, which is where I am stepping into, good Lord. And, you know, and that would explain a lot of things with the men that I've dated who are like 45, 46, 43. They're in freaking midlife crisis mode, ladies. <laughs> and ladies, too. Ladies go through this, too. So how many of you have gotten to know folks in their 40s and they're really bitter? They're upset with life. They're frustrated. They're like, I'm going to be the new me. I'm going to go find myself. I am getting a divorce. I am, I mean, major life change is happening in this, in this time of life, right? Um, and a lot of us, you know, when we see people flipping out uh, in their, in their mid forties, it could have something to do with, I see Dennis Ross saying, wait a minute now. Um, I, it could have something to do with midlife crisis. I completely forgot about that whole concept of midlife crisis until I started approaching it. And I had like an epiphany that, hold on, that's what's going on with this chick. That's what's going on with this dude. They had midlife crisis. I forgot all about that. Now, and, and, and it, everybody doesn't go through it. It is not something everybody goes through. But what I'm saying is that, when it it does happen, and apparently this is one of the times in people's lives when it happens in the 40s. Another crisis, and I don't know if you all have heard about this, is quarter-life crisis. Has anybody heard of quarter-life crisis? Quarter-life crisis is something that happens um, more like uh, between the 20s and the 30s. And what quarter-life crisis is, um, is it's, it's kind of that, so I've gotten to this part, of my life, I've gotten out of college, or I'm now out of my parents' house if they didn't go to college, and I'm entering the real world, and I'm freaking out, right? So <clears throat> just to read it specifically, quarter-life crisis occurs in one's 20s after entering the real world. Eric Erickson, who proposed eight crises that humans face during their development, proposed the existence of a crisis occurring at this age in the 20s and 30s. The conflict he associated with young adulthood is the intimacy versus isolation crisis. So according to him, after establishing a personal identity in adolescence, young adults seek to form intense, usually romantic relationships with other people. And so when in, so in this seeking and, and this is this this crosses over into business, this crosses over into friendships, but you start to see the shift that happens with relationships from the, the, the exit of college and into the entrance of, of real life. And so, um, and, and Diamond is saying, hey, I swear I think I'm going through this right now. And, you know, it's not, it's not like a bad thing. It's good to know it so that you can own it and you can and do something about it. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we come back after the break. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place this first. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arm, my equipment, and myself. I'm an expert, and I'm a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong, and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com, we came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first. And 
that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it, and it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ, and he guide us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. Uncle Dan? Mom? Dad? If you store your guns properly, so not just anyone can get to them. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. Safer when my friends come over. As your neighbor, I'll feel safer. As a school teacher, I'll feel safer. We'll all feel safer. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. Hey, Teddy. Why is investing important? Most people have goals that they're trying to reach in life that has something to do with growing their assets. That's a problem that we have in our community because we don't take enough risk to actually grow our assets to meet our expectations. So how does Paris Capital help me? I see myself as a world-class investor. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm here to bring a transparent, low-fee strategy so people understand what they're getting into when they invest. A dollar today is not worth the same as a dollar tomorrow. You can go to my website at parishcapital.com or call us at 800 618 one nine four zero. Ignore the noise, stay focused, and prosperity be unto you. Vince Lombardi once said that it's hard to be aggressive when you're confused. Some of us think that taking our lives to the next level, both personally and professionally, is a confusing and complicated process. Guess what? It's not, and I can prove it. My book, Truisms, will show you how living your life by rules that are so self-evident and obvious, you'll say, I knew that. This powerful yet short, detailed bestseller is on sale right now, under $10. Go to michaelmcfadden.com. That's michaelmcfadden.com, and let Truisms help Help you to the next level. If you're looking for that ratchet, you're in the wrong place. It's the nation's urban internet station, Sensation Station Network. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. We have our in house guest here. I'd like to welcome Tasia Scott. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you come a little closer to my. Oh. There we go. There we go. Um, and and Tasia is here to. She's going to represent all millennials on the planet. No, I'm just playing. She. <laughs> Please don't put that pressure. On. <laughs> no, she won't. She won't. But uh, but Tasia is here to um, kind of give her perspective on some of the the very things that we're talking about today. And um, and in all fairness. Um, I, I just kind of sprung some, some things on her, literally. So <laughs> so let's be gracious um, with her. How are you doing, Tasia? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody everybody gets a little nervous. A little nervous energy is a good thing. You know, it's a, it's a good thing. So, <laughs> but, um, so from my understanding, you have, you're, you're currently in school. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us just a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm um, 24 years old, so I don't get keep up with it um I'm going to school to be a doctor or I'm studying to be a doctor for premature babies and neonatal I mean premature babies and babies born with disabilities okay is what I want to do um I currently work at Party City and also at Publix to save money for okay. medical school because it's expensive. Are you in medical school right now? No. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-mm. I'm doing post baccalaureate program, a post bac program. Okay. To bring up my GPA so I can go to school and. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So she's got a plan. She's got a plan. <laughs> and um and so what I was just talking about is this whole concept of quarter life 
crisis, right? And, um, you know, we hear, we hear of midlife crisis, you know, and, and it's always characterized by men in their 40s who they had to go buy the hot new red sports car and <laughs> get the young babe, you know. And, and, but, you know, and while it's characterized that way, that's not necessarily how it always plays out. Um, uh, you know, a quarter-life crisis can, can come in the form of, I'm going to totally revamp my life, or I'm going to get a divorce, or I'm going to go back to school, or, you know, usually that's the result of the crisis. The crisis is, I don't know what to do with myself. Here I am in my 40s in this place, and oh my God, what's next? Um, and so according to um, Eric Erickson, there is also a uh, quarter-life crisis that happens between the ages of 25 and 30. You're almost there. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm already She feels like she's already there. So I, I would love to hear um, why you think you might be already there, but, but have you seen some of your peers kind of go through this? And what it really is is, I'm, I'm kind of out of my undergraduate, you know, studies, or I'm out of my parents' house, and now I'm stepping into the real world, and this transition is just scary as hell. So what, do you, what are your thoughts about that? Well, as a kid being in the house basically her whole life, um, I have really strict parents. So going to college was like a, a mind-opening thing for me. I get to explore. I don't have curfew. I can do mm -hmm. what I want to. No rules kind of thing. No parents to, like, guide me, stuff like that. So with an experience like that, being trapped, in a sense, in a house all the time, it's like, oh, and then you have all this freedom. What are you going to do with it? So you start doing all kinds of, like, wild and crazy stuff, living this college experience, mm -hmm. and then you're not focusing on your studies there, actually. Then once you get out of school, you're like, oh, man, I wasted four or five years in school partying and playing around. <laughs> now what am I supposed to do? Now what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then you don't want to live with your parents anymore because you feel like you're too old. You've experienced too much freedom to go back home and be, like, under rules and constriction. But you're still like, now what? What am I supposed to do? I have this degree, but I don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to go with it. I don't know if it's even valid. That's a... Uh, issue I've been going through because my degree is in biology I have a bachelor's in biology okay but I don't want to do research I just want to go straight to medical school but because of my college experience my grades weren't as great as they needed to be okay. to get into medical school right so now I have to pay either, either more money to do more schooling to bring up my GPA to go back to school again or to find something else that I'll either get paid for doing my degree or Working at Party City or Publix. Mm -hmm. got, yeah, got it. Well, and that, that is a very um, kind of great description of what a quarter-life crisis could look like, you know. And everybody handles life situations differently. They don't necessarily all experience the crisis. Um, somebody who can be in your exact shoes may feel no crisis at all, and then somebody who is in your shoes may be in intense crisis mm -hmm. mode. And so, um, and so there's, it, it, you know, it really is about, you know, I guess what, how you approach life, your background, and, you know, all of those things. Now, you said something interesting about um, about um, moving, uh, people moving, not wanting to move back into their parents' house. And one of the things that um, that has characterized millennials is staying in their parents' house longer mm -hmm. um, or going back home after college. Um, and, in fact, um, a lot of researchers have kind of coined or have extended adolescence to about age 24, um, because of, you know, the fact that, that millennials are not necessarily stepping out into the real world, quote-unquote, um, until, like, after that. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. There's, um, the reason why is because, or in my opinion, the reason why is because we, as kids, don't mature. Like, if you're sheltered a lot when you're younger, then you're not used to being on your own. I'm more of an independent kind of person. So I would rather, like, remove myself. I'd rather stay at home in the house I live in now by mm -hmm. myself and struggle than to, like, put pressure on my parents knowing that they have other kids to take care of. Right. But a lot of people my age are a little bit more dependent. They're not as mature. They're not trying to be independent. They just want to be like, oh, well, I live with my mom, so I get to keep all my check. Right, right. So. And did you say other kids my age? Mm -hmm. Other kids my age. Other kids my age. <laughs> yeah, that, I couldn't help but notice that. She's 24. So. <laughs> all right, all right. We're going to get into the balance challenge, and we're going to come back to this. Keeping your balance with Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela.
All right, so my challenge to you is going to be about the crisis, um, midlife crisis, quarter life crisis, um, uh, you know, and you may not have ever experienced it, and um, because that's totally normal not to experience it as well. It's not for everybody. Um, but I do want you to examine where you are in your life right now, whether you're a Gen Xer, whether you're a millennial. Um, if you are in that, if you're a Gen Xer, you might be in that midlife crisis age range. If you are a millennial, you could possibly be or about to be or just actually um, passing through the potential quarter life crisis area. So I want you, for your, my challenge to you is I want you to evaluate your life because the, the crisis is all about what now. You're kind of stuck in that what now place. And I want you to evaluate when have you had those what now situations in your life and what did you do to move to the next level, okay? And you may or may not be there right now, but to know that, to understand how you handled your what now situations and moving to the next level is how you're going to be able to look at how you solve problems and and to be ready if you do face that kind of situation. So it's really important to be self-aware and to understand. So the last time I faced a what now, my last time I faced a what now is when I got divorced. And I'm literally, like, I go through it. The divorce process was actually, um, it, it wasn't like a piece of cake, but it was a lot easier than what I hear a lot of people experience. I step out of it, and I'm on the other side of it, and it's like, uh, now what? <laughs> um, and fortunately, I was able to get through that, that particular phase quickly. So... What have you done in your now what situations? And if you wouldn't, you know, you can post it here on the comments. And, and how have you used that to move yourself to the next level? It's important to know that so that you can get yourself through your next situation. That is your balance challenge for this week. And we'll be right back. Tacos, the cheese, and a large soda. That's $10,012. Please drive around. 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. People are always looking to invest in a good opportunity. So what if you could invest in the future of kids, like a stock? Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change called Better Futures. With your investment, it helps students like me go to college. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's a the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids, and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and Finish Your Diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. And lead the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Great leaders aren't born. They're made. And not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. And so a new American industry has been born. Sensation Station Network. All right. Oh. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. I, I, yeah, I can't see my directions back there. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> so, I'm Dr. Pamela, and I'm here with Tasia Scott, and we are just, we're talking life. We're talking life. Um, we're talking life as a millennial and life as a Gen Xer. I am a proud Gen Xer, um, even though our parents totally neglected us when we were growing up and, and made us, you know, be latchkey kids. And do you know what a latchkey kid is? Mm -mm. A latchkey kid is basically you come home from school, you got the key to your house, you could be eight, nine, 
10 years old, 7 years old, 8 years old. Oh, down the street somewhere. It, your parents don't know. No, 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 no. And you, you're, you got the key to the house. You're responsible for letting yourself in and, and being home and taking care of home until parents get home from work later that day. That's unheard of these days, right? Mm-hmm. That's like child abuse these days. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, I've technically. heard, like, when something happens and a child's been left home alone, especially in Georgia, um... It, 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 the parents are demonized. Like if the child was eight or nine years old and mm-hmm. they were home alone and they left the kid home, um, it's like you can get put in jail for that now. That's real crazy. It's ironic because aren't those the same parents that raised you guys? Right. It's just like, <laughs> oh, the irony. No, no, I actually think it's us that made that rule. Like right. now that we're grown, um, we're like, okay, see, we're going to put a stop to this. Right. Right. Uh-uh. <laughs> We're going to put a stop okay. to that. I got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I was telling them earlier how our generation coming up, um, you know, we were just like the unwanted kids in the 70s when we were being born and, and all of that. Um, some of us were born in the 60s. Um, the birth control became a very big thing. Abortion laws passed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want kids. <laughs> um, in the 80s, the, the Children of the Corn, all kind of, I don't know if you heard of these movies, but these are all movies that were like kids were demons. Children of the Corn, the Chucky doll, oh, um, yeah. dolls, a, a, a fire Those started. Were they were scary movies about kids being evil. And, you know, so they just did not like us growing up. And we are now grown, and now we're overprotective of our kids. We're mm-hmm. like, oh, so what? You're 25 years old. Come live with Mama again, because we're going to take care of you. That's where my mom gets this from. That's where I get. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> <laughs> Now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just telling her, like, hey, you're crazy. Please stop calling me. I'm fine. <laughs> we are called the hel- helicopter parents. Mm-hmm. So Generation X has turned into helicopter parents. We are the ones who will who will be, you know, at the college campus cussing the, the, the professor out because they gave their baby an F. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not even kidding, y'all. This happens. This is us doing this, Generation X. <laughs> that was my mind. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so we have become so protective of our kids, and I wonder um, if it has helped them or has it, um, you know, stifled them. I mean, what do you what do you think about that? Mm, in a way, yes, it did help, but also in a way, it did. Like it's a fifty fifty kind of thing, just okay. depending on the kind of person that you are, depending on how it affects you. For me, it affected me in, I guess, a good way. Because it gave me like some uh, discipline, some stability, kind of things, some some kind of morals and ethics, mm-hmm. and then it also helped me to be like independent and do for myself, basically, right? Without wanting to, just because they did so much, just like no, 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 please stop. I want to do for myself now. Right. But other people just want to be taken care of. Yeah, like I have a friend who I work with who um, wants to be taken care of. Like she earns to be taken care of Mm. so it's like oh okay um that's a good thing i guess but i wouldn't i don't feel comfortable because if that person doesn't want to take care of you anymore then what am i supposed to do well it's interesting because i see i see both extremes so um you know with the millennials i see i you know especially with young women i see i i got this i'm i can handle this on my own i'm strong i'm Mm -hmm. independent um, I don't need a man. I don't, uh, you know, I, if I get a man, all I need him for is to scratch my itch and I'm good. I don't really need no <laughs> relationship. And <laughs> they're just a lot, a, a whole different mindset, a lot more independent. Um, and then you have the whole other end, you know, where it's super dependent and I'm going to find ways to get this person to, to pay this for me, cover that for me, take care of me. It sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody wants their bills paid. Right. Right. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> It would be great, but what do you have to do to get that? Because right. a lot of people also want stuff in return, so exactly. what am I? What do I have to put out to get what you're trying to sell me, you know? Right, so. right, what's the sacrifice, mm-hmm. exactly. So, you know, and so this, you know, my intention is not to, you know, sort of demonize any, any of the generations, <laughs> you know, because, you know, like I said, you know, uh, in, for me to say Gen Xers were the unwanted generation, then that means that I'm, I'm talking about the baby boomers, and I'm saying the baby boomers didn't care about us. That's not necessarily what I'm saying, because um, baby boomers had to work really hard. I mean, they were they were working factory jobs, and you know they were doing a lot, and and they had to do what they had to do. 
um, to put food on the table. And Generation X is the first generation um, where, well, not the first generation, but one of the generations where we were like, you go to college and you get a bomb job. You know, you go to college and you got guaranteed stability. Mm -hmm. But we were also the first generation towards the end of us and the beginning of you all where that was no longer true. A college degree was now like equivalent to high school Mm -hmm. diploma. That's what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I started seeing that towards the end of when, you know, when I graduated, I started seeing, um, it's not necessarily a guaranteed, sig- you know, significant salary mm-hmm. upon graduation. It's not. Yeah. It's really like a high school diploma. And even with your college degree, after struggling for those four hard years <laughs> and paying hundreds and thousands of dollars, you're only guaranteed, quote unquote, $8 an hour minimum wage at a regular job. Yeah. I could have saved my hundred thousands of dollars in loans that I took out if I was just going to work for eight twenty five. You well, know? and that's so interesting because that's kind of the debate that's happening in California right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the proposal, and I believe it got passed, is um, fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage. And the people who are really upset about that are um, the folks who. It's one of the populations of people that are upset about that are the folks who went to college, and they're like, fifteen dollars an hour should be like college level pay um why are we paying people who are like high school kids working at mcdonald's 15 dollars an hour Mm -hmm. um now i happen to have a kid who's in college in california who is paying you know we're we're working together to pay for college and i'm like hallelujah give him one of those 15 dollars an hour jobs so he can help pay for college (laughs) um and so i have a whole different view but you know but that's interesting you know what do you think about that 15 dollars an hour in Georgia, it would be great because Georgia rates are real cheap <laughs> compared to other states. Well, and then in all fairness, California cost of living is ridiculously high, too. Mm-hmm. So $15 an hour it's may like not even be. Here. Yeah, very it's different. Probably different. But starting here with $15 an hour is okay. Yeah. Oh, you know, I missed the, I missed the signal. I missed the signal. So we are going to go into love notes. <laughs> All right, so, um, love notes, um, you know, and I don't have, like, a specific note, so I'm just going to give a scenario of a situation that I know of and, and talk about what we can do, you know, how that can be addressed, but, um, so I know a, a, a young lady who, she's 25 years old, and, um, it, well, she's, I guess she's around somewhere in that range, and she's kind of in a, a midpoint in her not midpoint, but she's kind of in, a, in between point. She's kind of stuck. She graduated from her undergraduate, you know, got her undergraduate degree, and she is wanting to expand and, you know, should I go get a PhD? Should I go get my doctoral degree? Or should I just, you know, work and, and spend the time getting that experience? Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's a really good question because right now, you know, she's single, no kids. Uh, you know, my thing is, live it up live it up and do your thing like Mm -hmm. I I think you can still you know pursue your education and 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 get the PhD I think that's great but I think life experience is priceless and it's not something you're always going to be able to execute in the same way while you're single with no kids so if I were 25 years old, single, no kids. I was never 25 years old and single with no kids. I was 25 years old with a child and um, um, on my way to getting married. But um, but I was pretty dang independent. I did, I did purchase my first house when I was 25, and I was working on my master's degree. So I was doing pretty well, but I didn't have the freedom of not having any kids. So I, you know, I would say travel the world. Go to a different country every month. I mean, and, and it sounds expensive, but it really is not. Mm-hmm. There are so many opportunities to travel, and that's one thing that I do love about our millennials is that they are seizing the opportunities to travel and, and really see the world and expand their horizons. And you can do so for I mean, free in many cases. If you take their teaching jobs all over the world, they're looking for American English-speaking teachers to go to 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 various places and so and service opportunity there's so many opportunities you know people who are doing this kind of thing at this phase in their life Mm -hmm. basically all of my friends on facebook have been traveling meeting famous people like denzel washington stuff people i went to school with 
like two or three years ago or just like out there living like this is where my crisis came in okay so i'm like oh man look at everyone doing you know what they're doing and i'm here why am i at this point not there but you know went through this whole thing i realized any on but that's a side story <laughs> but, <laughs> well answer yeah. that question now why are you here and not there are you not desiring to be here and you would prefer to be there at first yes but then i had to pray about it and do some spiritual cleaning and all this stuff like talking to God, um, cleansing my life, basically, of all negative things or things that I perceive to be negative mm-hmm. and stuff like that, to, instead of looking at my friend like, oh, man, you're doing this. Why am I not doing that? Versus, like, oh, being congratulatory towards them. Like, oh, I'm happy for you. I know that my time is coming eventually, right. but I can't sit around and mope because I'm not there where you are. Maybe it's just your time to be there right now, and it's not mine yet. So I'll just have to wait for it. That is such a great point because we do, especially with social media Mm -hmm. and Facebook, you know, we tend to look at other people's lives and, and want to emulate their lives, you know, want, you know, just want to be there. just want to be with, do what they're doing, um, and have no idea what it took to get there or what is really going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, our lives are our own lives and it's it's totally cool to have aspirations. You see somebody traveling, you see people on Facebook who are doing things you'd love to do, and aspire to that and create a plan based on how your own life is structured to getting there. That's totally okay. But, you know, to to just envy somebody, to just envy them and, and say, I want what they want or, or what they have, um, without having, without matching that up against your life, um, is a very dangerous way to go, mindset to have. I know. My best friend tells me all the time that if the journey that you're taking now is not about the per- it's not about the journey that you're taking. It's about the person you become after you take the journey. Yes, so I yes. Try to live by that. That's really great because that. yeah, that journey is is that refining process mm-hmm. <laughs> to and, help me get there. Yeah, and everybody has to go through a different refining process, and and you want to be a neonatal. neonatal doctor Doctor. Mm -hmm. so uh, opportunities to travel the world abound in the medical field Uh, yeah (laughs) i'm sure you've heard about doctors without borders Mm -hmm. um you know so there are just so many and these are things that i didn't hear about when i was in college this was not like there was not like an abundance of information about how to you know you know pursue your passions overseas this has become such a global society that um I, I just I love, you know, that, that people are taking advantage of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's fun to travel. I haven't traveled much, but I assume that it's fun. Because <laughs> all the pictures and stuff, even if it's just work. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I enjoy what I'm doing. So right. it's it's entertaining, it's enjoyable, it's pleasurable. Well we get that. so caught up in our own little worlds. Um, it's so important for us to be able to expand and um, you know, get to know another society. Um, I was on the internet the other day and I saw, you know, Facebook, there was this, this thing about the Hakka tribute that happens in Greenland, Greenland, not Greenland. Oh God. Ta- oh shoot. Oh, oh, I can't remember it, but, um, <laughs> but it's, it's the Hakka channel the Hakka tribute. And that tribute is a, is a tribal old tradition that has permeated the like the country does this as a whole. I was like, oh my god, I want to go there just yeah. because it it told me something about cultural appreciation there. Now I'm sure they have issues, but I'm curious, you know, to know what it's like to be in that country. And I'll I'll tell you what it is when we come back on the live exchange. Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. And so a new American industry has been born. Sensation Station Network. 
this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's a good kind that comes with having a house full of kids, and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. And lead the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. What's a dumb way to listen to an awesome mix of urban hits? Too much sauce. All right, welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. By the way, it was New Zealand I was talking about. I'll get back to that. But uh, today, we're looking at what's going on in our lives. We're just looking at life um, from the standpoint, <clears throat> excuse me, of being a, a millennial and being a Gen Xer. Um, and, you know, if you represent a different um, generation, let us know because we'll make sure we cover you as well. <laughs> uh, but we, so we're talking about life, you know, and... and um, I, I would love for you all to join in the conversation. Give us a call, 678-613-5857. And, um, or, you know, just continue to comment on, um, on the posts here. You know, I was t- I was, we were talking about travel and how because we've become such a, a global society, more uh, millennials are really jumping on this whole the, the traveling thing. And, and it's like it's nothing. And, you know, for us in previous generations, it was like this major thing, you know, mm-hmm. to, to leave the country. And um, it really isn't so much the case anymore. And, um, and what I was saying is I came across um, this Hakka tribute. And, I, and, and it's so funny because it came up twice in one week about two totally different issues. But Hakka tribute is, from my understanding... A, 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 a tribal traditional um, dance and chant that is dedicated to honoring somebody or, or standing in unity with somebody uh, about some particular issue. So the first time I heard about the Hakka Tribute, and this is done in New Zealand, um, was an entire student body at an all-boys school who paid tribute to their outgoing president. And it, I'm talking the audience had, had guys of European descent, Asian descent, African descent. I mean, it was a very diverse crowd. And I just had to look at this. I was like, so, so are you telling me that the greater society of, of New Zealand embraces a tribal tribute? You know, that's just something we don't see here in the United States. That's not, you know, it, we, don't, we don't really have a great appreciation for things like that. And so I was just very curious, like, well, what kind of country is this? I just kind of <laughs> want to know a little bit about this. And um, a, a few days later... Uh, another thing that came up was the, you know, a Hakka tribute um, to the Standing Rock, um, in, in solidarity with the Standing Rock um, issue that's happening, and in in North Dakota, I believe it is, and um, and so the folks in New Zealand did a Hakka tribute on the beach to be in solidarity with um, with the tribes in North Dakota. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I've got to go to New Zealand. I'm just curious, you know, yeah. for no particular reason. Um, I did start looking at real estate. I was just curious. <laughs> like, I'm curious, you know, but I, it's just the whole idea of broadening our horizons in ways that we never even thought possible from the standpoint of a Gen Xer. That might be so much more normal for a millennial to say, you know what, I'm going to relocate to another country. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. States is whatever. We'll be here forever. <laughs> we'll be here forever. We like to explore, maybe. Man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta live here. <laughs> I mean, and with that said, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are about if you know, um, you know, Donald Trump was chosen as the Time Magazine Person of the Year, and and we talked about that a little earlier. And I, I would love to hear, and even if you don't want to give your personal opinion, what you've heard other folks in your generation d- discussing about. This. Well. <laughs> To be honest, everybody's gonna, everybody's saying they're gonna die. Air quotations. <laughs> we're gonna die. We're gonna die. Donald Trump's the president. No, we're dying. Oh gosh. No, we're not dying. We're Donald not di- Trump y'all, is the president. We're not dying. It's okay. <laughs> Honestly, in my personal opinion, both candidates were something else this year. Mm-hmm. So, no matter who won, they're still in cahoots with each other. So who knows if she's saying stuff to him or he could have been saying stuff to her and, Mm -hmm. you know, all the other presidents before them. Like, you know, it's like who's to say who's really making the decisions. Yeah, he's the face putting on the speech or saying the act or whatever, but 
who's whispering the stuff in his ear to tell him what to say. Right. He has people writing stuff for him, so. Yeah. But he's on that cover. I think that's hilarious to be t- <laughs> <laughs> to be person of the year. That's hilarious. Yeah, it, it, you know, and and I, you know, I agree. I I agree. There are a lot of powerful influences that that are behind the president in the ear of the president. No matter who gets elected, um, you know, who does everything they say they're going to do. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't happen. So, um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. I don't believe, and I never have believed, that this is the end of life, um, or that it's the end of life as we know it even. I, you know, I just don't know, and, and call me naive if you want, but I just don't think it's going to have such, you know, quite the dramatic effect that, you know, just in the way that our country is structured, things happen so slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people are talking about, oh, I'll see you in the concentration camp, and and all that mess. Yeah, I'm going back to Africa. Yeah, you know, y'all, you need to calm down. Relax. Um, <laughs> Please. <laughs> I will be back. <laughs> Now we come to the special feature of our program. Sensation Station Network. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you, A, line things up a centimeter from her hairline? Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. No, 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 no. Sweatbands are so hot right now. Everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within? Um. C. Look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D. Show empathy. Mom, you really don't have to... Ta-da! Twinsies! (laughs) I kind of love it. (laughs) As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. JBT 700 Miami Circle 30324. It's not a chain. It's a chain reaction. Invest $49 a month at a real gym. For more info, go to Facebook.com forward slash Jeans Body Tech. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's a the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids, and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. And lead the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Here at Mind Your Business Radio, it is our goal to empower you with the information you need to secure a legacy over generations and generations and generations and generations. Really, Althea? The mission of Mind Your Business Radio is to educate people of color and women about the financial and legal aspects of business, personal finance, and changing your money mindset to create financial freedom. No doubt. There's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. This is Mind Your Business Radio, your business, your family, your life. Every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 1. Now we come to the special feature of our program. Sensation Station Network. Primary election. Lack of diversity. Gas prices. Michael Jackson. Trending topics. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. So, what is trending? You know, you know what's really kind of crazy and scary, and I don't know. You know, a lot of people like to build symbolic meaning behind things. Might I'm sure have theories about this, but in the news, fires, fire, fire, fire in the news. You know, the Tennessee mountains. Don't tell me you didn't hear about that. Tennessee, Gatlinburg. <laughs> No, but, it, you know, and, and, but, and, and it's, I'm not saying that to, because of you, because there's a lot of people who don't know what's going on. And so um, just last week there was a fire, major fire, ma- fires all over Georgia, I mean, well, well, North oh, Carolina, right. and, yeah, or, um, in, in different, and then Tennessee. The one in Tennessee in Gatlinburg um, happened in a kind of a resort um, vacation town, and uh, that place was leveled. It was devastating. But what was even more devastating about it was that, you know, people died because the fire came on so suddenly and there was no warning. 
So, so to be home and to all of a sudden seeing a fire come upon your home and you can't even run anywhere because everything is on fire. Um, and I mean, and so there were videos, um, there's this video, this one guy's experience that I had been, I've been following of his whole journey down the mountain, basically running from this fire in, in a car and, um, sometimes having to drive over fire to get to safety. And, and when they, you see the car at the end, the tires are melted, the front of the car is melted. Um, and they left not because they were given any warning to leave, but because they saw the fire. And they were like, I think it's time to get out of here. Yeah. So there were, uh, gosh, I, I, oh, I don't remember the death toll, about 12 um, that were, that were you know, killed in this fire. And, and I'm talking, you know, there was a situation that was really sad where a father and a son drove off to go find, took the only family car, drove off to go find help or just to kind of see what, the, what was going on with the fire if they need to evacuate. The wife calls and said, oh, my God, the fire is here. Tries to get back to the house and can't get back to the house because of the fire. Mom and two daughters are missing and later found dead. Oh, man. I mean, just devastating stories. And, um, and, and so another fire that happened um, just over the weekend was in Oakland. I don't know if you heard about the Oakland fire. Mm -mm. Um, but this happened at a warehouse. And it's a warehouse that was kind of an artistic um, sanctuary for people. You know, they would come and they would express their art. They would perform their art. There were people who lived there. And, um, and that particular time when the fire happened, there was a um, party going on and um but it sounds like a very close-knit artic um artist community and um tragic and i'm 36 people killed in this fire um it was a building that was not up to code there's a lot of controversy over that and the business owner and and how that building was kept up um Really sad story I saw yesterday about a mom who lost her only son. He was engaged to be married. He and his fiance died in that fire together. Um, and But the way the building was structured was that it was a maze. It was kind of like a maze uh, with a lot of stuff all over the place. So people could not get out. People were stuck. Um, it, it was just a very hard place to try to navigate through to exit. Um, and so... Really, really, really tragic, and um, and you know, and I've heard a lot of opinions about the coverage that the Gatlinburg fire is getting because um, oh, they're a privileged town, they're a privileged community. Dolly Parton has committed money to the community, but it's also her community. She has Dolly Land. Her 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 um uh, her property is right there at the foot at the base of that of that mountain, hmm. and so there's a lot of people who are really upset that they're getting a lot of attention. I mean, even to this point where I've heard people say, I don't care about what happened there because my people are suffering. And, what? yeah, and so I, I struggle with that a little bit because um, we've become so... <sighs> bipolar is the thing that's coming to mind right now, but, you know, we just, we're so divisive. It has to be this way or that way. Nothing in the middle. Mm -hmm. I can't embrace more, you know, more than one group. It's got to be, it's this way or the highway. Have you seen that kind of mindset? Yeah. Among your peers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. Um, as far as, like, racism goes or just natural disasters? Anything. Or... I mean, it just seems to me it just, just kind of be across the board. Um, racism is definitely one of the, the more highly divisive Issues, without a doubt, mm -hmm. you know, and it seems to spill over into everything. I mean, it's spilled over into the fires, you yeah. know, you know, we're, we're, we're mourning the tragedy of people who have passed away and there's people who are like, they, they bring in and I, and I, I get it. I get the mindset behind it, which is we have to take care of ourselves and we have to fight for, for certain rights. I totally get that. I have a hard time with that to the exclusion of caring about other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think it's weird. How did these fires even happen? Well, uh, you know, did have, somebody set it on fire, or is it a natural fire? Well, you no, know, they have always said from the beginning the Tennessee Gatlinburg fire was a, a human caused fire, is what they're saying. And then, and I think that they were doing a lot of investigation before they can figure it out. And I saw a headline today that said something about it might have been teenagers who set the fire, um, whether on, or not on purpose. I'm not really sure, but. Um, it's on purpose. Yeah, I mean, we certainly have arson issues that happen in California. I say we because I'm from California, um, <laughs> and um, and and I know that in California there are specific because unfortunately 
they are so used to this happening, there are certain procedures that take place. People are evacuated. People are required to evacuate, it, evacuate long before it gets to the point where it got to in Tennessee. Yeah. Um, I know this is not a common occurrence in Tennessee, so um, it's really tragic. You know, how that all went down. Um, so we're going to go to break. Um, and just to let you know, I, I have Tasia Scott here, and she's representing all the millennials. No, just not all of them. them. She is helping to, to give voice to the millennial experience as I give voice to the Gen X experience. <laughs> Stay right there. We'll be right back. <laughs> Leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. Hey, Teddy, why is investing important? Most people have goals that they're trying to reach in life that has something to do with growing their assets. That's a problem that we have in our community because we don't take enough risk to actually grow our assets to meet our expectations. So how does Paris Capital help me? I see myself as a world-class investor. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm here to bring a transparent, low-fee strategy so people understand what they're getting into when they invest. A dollar today is not worth the same as a dollar tomorrow. You can go to my website at parishcapital.com or call us at 800-618-1940. Ignore the noise, stay focused, and prosperity be unto you. People are always looking to invest in a good opportunity. So what if you could invest in the future of kids, like a stock? Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change called Better Futures. With your investment, it helps students like me go to college. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Uncle Dan? Mom? Dad? If you store your guns properly, so not just anyone can get to them. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. Safer when my friends come over. As your neighbor, I'll feel safer. As a school teacher, I'll feel safer. We'll all feel safer. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids, and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. And lead the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you, A, line things up a centimeter from her hairline? Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. No, 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 no. Sweatbands are so hot right now. Everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within... Um. C. Look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D. Show empathy. Mom, you really don't have. Ta da! Twinsies! <laughs> I kinda love it. <laughs> As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. In the interest of science, 
Science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science, science,
So that happens to us, um, according to research, in our 20s, and it also happens to us in our 40s. And I think it triggers, it's triggered in the 40s because we've got a lot of stuff happening. We've got empty nests happening. You know, the kids are going away to college. Um, spouses look at each other like, why the heck are we even married? <laughs> you know, people are like, I hate this career. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm ready for something else. So it's kind of that point in your life where you start to evaluate, is this the way that I want to spend the next half of my life? Uh, I don't know. And then and people start making changes. Mm-hmm. I'm talking a whole lot. So I, I just want to see <laughs> um, if, it, you know, if, if this resonates with you and also if you know people because our generation and older are, are probably your parents. And, and have you seen this kind of in your parents' generation? Yes. <laughs> yes. My parents have gone through their midlife crisis. Yes. <laughs> and they're trying to figure out. They have four kids total. So I'm the oldest of four. I'm 24. The youngest is 15. That's nine years, right? 15. Yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. So he's still in high school, but he's finishing up high school. So they're trying to figure out what are they going to do once he leaves to go to college. Okay. What is he going to do? Because the other two kids are in school. My sister has moved out also. But she's on her own now. She has a, um, She just had a baby. So she has a daughter now. She's like, okay. They've, now my parents are grandparents, so they're really trying to figure out, oh, man, what, what are we supposed to do now, you know? And that's the other thing. We're becoming grandparents, which is crazy as all get out. Like, hey, we got to have really? kids, too. I know. Y'all got to have kids. Oh, my mom said. <laughs> no, don't have kids. <laughs> Look, I already lived past the age you had kids. I know. Good. I'm like, no, I know. I, and my son, um, I had him when I was 19, and he's now my 20. Mom too. Okay. And I'm, I'm glad he didn't have a child when he was 19. Yeah. But I can't be a grandparent. No. That's what she said. <laughs> like, being a grandparent is not a bad thing. We're not ready for that. It's not a bad thing. It gives you a whole other chance to raise kids again. We're not ready for that. <laughs> Let me be 60, and then I'll be a grandma. I'll be like oh. one of them old traditional grand. No, I'm Sex- still be sexy. Cookies. I'll be 60, 60 year old <laughs> All right. We'll be right back on the live exchange. <laughs> Ms. Lombardi once said that it's hard to be aggressive when you're confused. Some of us think that taking our lives to the next level, both personally and professionally, is a confusing and complicated process. Guess what? It's not, and I can prove it. My book, Truisms, will show you how living your life by rules that are so self-evident and obvious, you'll say, I knew that. This powerful yet short, detailed bestseller is on sale right now, under $10. Go to michaelmcfadden.com. That's michaelmcfadden.com, and let Truisms help Help you to the next level. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place this first. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a warm place on a cold I want to be day. A football stadium. I want stadium. to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Hey, Teddy, why is investing important? Most people have goals that they're trying to reach in life that has something to do with growing their assets. That's a problem that we have in our community because we don't take enough risk to actually grow our assets to meet our expectations. So how does Paris Capital help me? I see myself as a world-class investor. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm here to bring a transparent, low-fee strategy so people understand what they're getting into when they invest. A dollar today is not worth the same as a dollar tomorrow. You can go to my website at parishcapital.com or call us at 800-618-1940. Ignore the noise, stay focused, and prosperity be unto you. 
All right, welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and I'm here with Tasia Scott, and she is a millennial who is very ambitious. She's working towards becoming a doctor, um, and so I, you know, I just really wanted to pick the brain of a millennial who <laughs> who can give us a little insight on uh, what's to come. And um, and you know, and I just have to acknowledge a couple of the comments. I see that Lashawn Barnes is saying, um, and this was with regards to Trump being. Um, person of the year for Time Magazine. Um, he did something no other candidate has done, uh, but does that truly make him a person of the year? She says, I don't think so. <laughs> um, and then Diamond has said, I feel like I am stuck. And so what I believe he's referring to is we've talked about quarter-life crisis, mid-life crisis, um, and then even post-traumatic growth and how, you, how one can grow from a, a tragic or traumatic or, you know, any kind of situation that we've faced. Um, and, you know, when, when Diamond said, I feel like I'm stuck, you know, a lot of people feel like they're stuck. I definitely, um, I kind of see that, especially when it comes to dating with the people in my generation who have gone through divorces and now, you know, and I've said this before, like our, our generation uh, by this age, we've been married, we've been divorced, we've had child custody battles, we've had people who haven't had kids and are freaking out they haven't had kids yet, are doing the artificial insemination or other alternatives to getting pregnant. Um, we've got um, you know all kinds of stuff happening, and then we're trying to date each other. Can you imagine the baggage <laughs> that we're bringing to the table when we date each other with all of this mess? Um, and so a lot of my peers feel stuck. Um, when it comes to that whole dating and relationship thing. And so you, when, 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 when I read that Diamond said he feels stuck and you said a lot of people I know feel that way, mm -hmm. um, and you were talking about corporate America, what, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Okay. So I just recently typed the paper, um, on this. So one of my best friends has, um, natural hair. He has the Afro, he likes to wear his braids, he has rough facial hair, stuff like that. But when he goes out um, to an interview or to go get a job or something, they immediately turn him away because of his facial um, hair and his appearance. He's like a, a big guy, kind of buff, mm -hmm. and dark skin, like dark. So he's perceived as being a threat to society from mm -hmm. what he's... He's like the guy, basically, that uh, police target mm -hmm. for criminal behavior, stuff like that. Right. But he's the complete opposite. One of those, like, oh, I like, I don't care if my shorts are short kind of thing, you know? I'm comfortable with my sexuality. Like, he's mm -hmm. he's good in his own skin. But to other people, like corporate America, when they see him, they don't feel the same way. They're just like, no, you need to have clean facial expression, like, clean cut look. Mm -hmm. If your hair is dreaded, it needs to be pulled back kind of thing. Like, you have to have this professional attire. But who designed the professional attire in the first place? <laughs> Good because question. When you look at people um, who've done things like Steve Jobs or the guy who made Facebook and mm -hmm. stuff like that, or Bill Gates. Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gil yeah Bill They're Gates. just like, oh, they can show up to an interview or to a conference meeting in jeans and a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And they just woke up. Oh, I didn't even drink my coffee yet. My breath stinks. I didn't get the chance to shave. I have the morning after appearance, you know. And they're still making millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. So why do we have to, like, as black people alone, why do we have to put off this image just to get that job mm -hmm. for corporate America. Well, and that's the importance of ownership. I think, you know, um, a lot of us are starting our own businesses and are becoming entrepreneurs. And this is like, there's no better time mm -hmm. to do that than now because everything is at our fingertips. Um, you know, a lot of um, like millennials, like my son, um, my daughter is kind of at the cusp of it. Um, all she's known is the computer and the internet. And so it's like, there's so much that's accessible from the standpoint of somebody who went to high school and had to learn typing on a typewriter. <laughs> mm -hmm. We didn't have access to the world like this. And so now that we all have it, starting a business um, is just, uh, my God, if you know how to do graphic design, put up a website that I'm going to do graphic design for you and I'm going to charge 350 for book covers. And, and bam, you've got an online business. Mm -hmm. That's my brother's life right now. Really? I love it. Yeah. It's easy. It's out there for us 
in general because we know how to research we're used to doing research mm -hmm. and half of us don't even want to be in school for real yeah because when you're going to school it doesn't i can make tell sense. from my students in my classrooms but go ahead mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're going to school it's like why it's not an investment that we need mm -hmm. as black people sorry to like single it out mm -hmm. for race thing but to be honest it is like we aren't designed to go to school and learn the system, learn the educational stuff that they're teaching us in their system. Like, this corporate thing. We're not designed to sit here and just, oh, do bull, you know, work and, all right, uh, here we go, let's read this paper. All my tests in school, I failed. So what do you mean by we're not designed? What are we designed to do then? We are designed to be the creators as like, we're original people. And not to, like, shoot down any other race. Mm -hmm. Please, guys, don't think that I'm shooting down other races because, you know. You're just, like, you're just focusing on the strengths that we have. Yes, just focusing on our strengths. Mm -hmm. But we were the original people, so we're designed to be original. We've, we have almost all the ideas. That's why they brought us over here for slavery purposes, mm -hmm. to create America, which was, you know, great. And then they took over it. Like, we're here for strength purposes. We're strong enough to do withstand the millennial, um, withstand the things that you've went through growing mm -hmm. up, like the crack era and the drug thing. A lot of which you know. was planted into mm -hmm. the communities. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been designed to do all that stuff without like snapping and going crazy, like how you would see a lot of people going to schools and stuff, like ah, oh, f everything. I'm shooting this up. Mm -hmm. We're not programmed that way or designed that way and not to bash anyone please guys don't think I'm bashing you but it's just this is just how I feel like black people are created to do something greater than go to school and work for somebody and change their lifestyles to please someone else well that's that's an interesting very interesting standpoint um and and I can I can see what you're saying from the point of you know creating being creators and that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and you know i happen to be i love 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 school <laughs> i'm a big nerd i love it <laughs> and and i i took it all in but as i was taking it all in i took it all in from the mindset of how how can i use this information to create something new mm -hmm. so for me it was always about creation as well it was always about you know when i in fact when i was going for my interview to, um, to the phd program they asked me why do you want a phd for me it was never about so I can get a really good high paying job and work for somebody else. It was for me, so I said, you know, because I'm a philosopher and I want to be able to have the credentials needed in order to be a credible philosopher. Mm -hmm. And so again, it was about a means to an end to be able to, to, to create. And I, you know, I write books and I speak and I do those kinds of things. And that was what the education was for was to give me the credentials you know to do that but you're right it wasn't just to take in information and regurgitate it it was really to take information in and plot for how i'm going to recreate it and 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 establish something new from that information mm -hmm. so. that's how it is for us as millennials today like we're pushed to take it in and put the same information back out Nobody wants us to recreate new things. Oh, God, I want you guys to. Please. <laughs> I want you to recreate. Do, but for the corporate office and yeah. the workplace, they don't. The they want to keep landscape. it the same. They're considering new ideas, but they don't want to necessarily change the way things are. Well, and, and one thing I will say before we get into the balance challenge is that um, you guys are changing the landscape in a lot of ways. When you look at how Google is um, their, their corporate you know um, environment, very casual, very laid back, very flexible. They've adapted to the millennials. And I'm finding that companies that are more successful have figured that out, that they are figuring out that we have to adjust and adapt to mm -hmm. the flexibility and the mindset of the millennials. And, and I think it's important for any generation to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, but that said, we're going to go ahead and get into the balance challenge. Keeping your balance with Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. Okay, so the balance challenge for this week is, um, and I talked about quarter-life crisis, midlife crisis. You know, we've got those in the 20s dealing with quarter-life, those in the 40s dealing with midlife. And um, I want you to look at how you have experienced in each crisis that you may have gone through and come through and overcome. Um, and then what did it take for you to get through that? 
you may not have experienced quarter life crisis. You may not have experienced midlife crisis, and you may never experience any of those. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, there are points in life, you know, the, just by the nature of the way life goes, there's ebbs and there's flows and there's highs and there's lows, there's cycles to things. So I am pretty much going to guarantee that if you keep living, you're going to experience some kind of crisis. Um, so how do you get through those crises? You know, and you know, we're in the middle of the holiday season and a lot of people, you know, struggle with finances, losses of loved ones that they remember during this time of year and, um, Think about how you have overcome your past crises um, and keep that in mind so that you can be prepared and armed for the next one. Because these things tend to catch us by surprise. You know, you know, things happen and we're just thrown for a loop and we're like, oh my gosh, and we totally forget what we did before to get through. I am so guilty of it. I have had people tell me, you need to read your book. <laughs> you do what yeah so you know so we sometimes are great at giving advice and we're and and figuring out how to solve things when we're in a good place in our life but then when we hit the crisis we don't know what to do so um so i want you to think about that what crisis have you been through and have you overcome and how did you overcome it put that in your back pocket for the next time another crisis happens we'll be right back you may not have time to roll out dough for a perfectly flaky crust that's made from scratch. Or enough time to mix vegetables with all white meat chicken and a homemade gravy. She knows you may not have a moment to crimp the edges of your favorite chicken pot pie. But Marie Callender's does. And when she's done, all you need to do is find time to grab someone special. Sit down and savor. Marie Callender's. It's time to say Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. Uncle Dan? Mom? Dad? If you store your guns properly, so not just anyone can get to them. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. Safer when my friends come over. As your neighbor, I'll feel safer. As a school teacher, I'll feel safer. We'll all feel safer. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. People are always looking to invest in a good opportunity. So what if you could invest in the future of kids, like a stock? Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change called Better Futures. With your investment, it helps students like me go to college. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. This is big business. This is the American way. Station, station network. See ya. All right, welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and I'm joined by Tasia Scott, and we are talking about the generations and um, just kind of what's going on in the world. Um... I have a chart in front of me that kind of gives us a little bit of the difference between the different generations. Um, you know, and I don't know if any of you heard this, but the first um, generation of this century, um, well, the previous century, actually, the 19th century, is the traditionalists. Um, and that was, like, born between 1900 and 1945. So, you know, a lot of them are kind of phasing out. Are they still around? Oh, no. No. Well, not Maybe. if they were born in 1900. Oh, yeah. Maybe about... 
116 right now. I think there's a couple of people around who are somewhere around that age. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have the baby boomers, and they were born um, somewhere between 1946 and 1964. Their current age range right now is around, um, wait, hold on now. Let me, let me make sure I got this right. Well, they were born, anyway, they were born 1946 to 1964. And then we have Generation X, um, born around 1965 to 1980. Um, and then we have the Millennials, 1981 to 2000. So, um, and, you know, and I've heard the next one is like Generation Y, and we don't really have a whole lot of information out about this group yet. Um, so right now, the ones who are entering the workforce, who are in college, are our Millennials. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so, so some, some examples of Generation X, um, President Barack Obama, I didn't realize he was in my generation, but he is also a Gen Xer, which I'm like, is that true? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Um, we got Bill Clinton, who was a baby boomer, and then we've got Serena Williams, who is a millennial. Really? You know, and, the, the, and, and some of these age ranges kind of overlap a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we look at, let's see... Um, some of the things, so the perceptions of Gen Xers are shaped by growing up, having to take care of themselves early. Did I not say that? Mm-hmm. And watching their politicians lie and their parents get laid off. Um, this came of age when the USA was, we, were, we came of age when the USA was lost, losing its status as the most powerful and prosperous nation in the world. Um, the first generation that will not do as well financially as their parents did. I said all of this, and I didn't even see this thing. <laughs> but it is the first generation where, you know, we were told, oh, you do all this, you make a bunch of money. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as the millennials, you can tell me whether or not this sounds like it, it sounds true or not. Um, oh, 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 I forgot. I forgot to finish the Gen Xers. We got energy crisis, dual income parents, I mean families, so now both people have to work. Um, single parents, first generation of latchkey kids, which I mentioned, um, Y2K, I don't know if you remember Y2K, really? Oh, when the world, oh, the world's ending. Yeah, your 2000 hit and everybody's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> the world's going to end. Um, <laughs> uh, moms working, increase in divorce rate. Okay, so for millennials, um, digital media, mm-hmm. um, the world is focused on children, so it's a more child-focused world. Um, school shootings, terrorist attacks, AIDS, 9-11, um, and, and, and I wonder if there was an increase in the terrorist attacks or if it was increased because the media is able to cover it now because now we're more, we have more exposure to the media. Mm-hmm. Um, typically grew up as children of divorce. Um, I guess because Gen Xers were like, we're liberating, I don't mm-hmm. know. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> Um, they hope to be the next generation to turn around all the wrong that they see in the world today. Mm -hmm. Um, they grew up more sheltered than any other generation as the parents strive to protect them from the evils of the world. Um, they came in age in a period of economic expansion. Um, they kept busy as kids. Because we put you guys in all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the first generation of children with schedules. (laughs) <laughs> yep. oh that's true that sounds true okay that's interesting and um we so and i need to step back to the baby boomers i should have given that one first but um this was the era of civil rights vietnam war war sexual rev- revolution that's where the birth control and the abortion came through um cold war russia and space travel um they have the highest divorce rate and second marriages in history that's mm. interesting. That interesting. Um, post-war babies who grew up to be radicals in the 70s and yuppies in the 80s. This is who I was raised by. <laughs> My parents so don't fit that mold at all. <laughs> but, <laughs> but those were their peers. Um, the American dream was promised to them as children and they pursued it. And as a result, they are seen as being greedy, materialistic, and ambitious. Um, and they did get to materialize that, that American dream. It was, you work hard, you make, um, you know, even if you didn't go to college, you can work in a factory and make a really good living for the family mm-hmm. and, and only have one, one parent working and you guys are good. Mm-hmm. Those days are gone. I know. <laughs> How are you guys going to bring that back? <laughs> Don't worry, we won't. <laughs> yeah, you won't? No. <laughs> they make no promises. Like, no. <laughs> it sounds nice. But eventually, it's like, all right, I'm tired of paying all the bills. What are you doing, man? You're just taking care of the kids. The kids are fine. Now what you going to do? Right. 
So no. Yeah, it's 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 time to it's time for a change though. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's another thing that um, has kind of made the news. So race has become race has always been an issue. Let me just put that out there first. Um, but it it has become such a fiery topic in the last. I'll say the last eight years, um, because, you know, it's funny, when, when President Obama was elected, there was all these um, analysts saying, you know, we have reached a post-racial America. <laughs> what the heck does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> the races are gone. Like, I, 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 never, I never got that. Well, the next eight years kind of proved how completely wrong that statement was. I mean, what have we seen over the last eight years with regards to race? <laughs> that has gotten worse. It's gotten worse. I mean, or it's or it's come to the surface. Yeah, it's it's gotten pretty bad. Mm-hmm. So before it was really bad during the civil rights movement and stuff, and then the people. So what's going on now is this Black Lives Matter movement. Mm-hmm. That is what is making it a lot worse. Anyway, that's making it worse. Ironically, so I think the people who are against it is what's making it worse. I'm gonna tell you about okay, it. Okay, go go go. So. <laughs> There is the civil rights movement, which is a great movement. It's regular people like me and you just walking around like, hey, man, you tired of being impressed? Yeah, I'm tired of being impressed, too. All right, let's 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 get together. Let's do something about this. We're going to make a change. And so everyone gets together. They have meetings. They do boycotts. They do sit-ins. They do all kinds of great stuff to make a change, to prove that they're going to make the change. Mm-hmm. And then by them, like, taking money away from um, the people that, you know, need it, Right. then they're like, oh man, y'all taking all our money out of our pockets, hold up, we gotta feed our kids, alright, alright, what do you want, civil rights, okay, here, take them. So they were Go unified, if nobody's on the buses, the bus system is done. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, alright, fine, fine, here, here, take your rights and move on. Mm-hmm. So now we got these rights, and we're like, yes, we got these rights, we're going up, yeah, turn up, woo. <laughs> but now, we have President Obama, who was in office. Um, the past eight years, and they're like, oh, yay, President Obama's in office. We got a black president. Yes, we'll have to do nothing now. He's going to take care of all black people. We're good. <laughs> but now that he's there, he's changed some things, yeah, for black people or for people in general. He's changed things, but then it's like, now what do we do? He's about to leave office. Oh, my gosh, Trump, Trump is in office now. What are we going to do? Police are shooting up kids, and, you know, it's mm-hmm. really bad. So... As this Black Lives Matter movement has taken into place, now it's like, oh, it started off as a hashtag meaning something like, yeah, Black Lives Matter, please stop killing us. Like, mm-hmm. this isn't fair. Stop killing us unjustly. Right. You know? Give these people something else besides pay vacations. Give them some actual jail time mm-hmm. for what they've done because they're taken away from us. But instead, people are like, nah, you guys are saying Black Lives Matter. How dare you separate yourselves from everyone else? Black lives don't only matter. All lives matter. Mm -hmm. Blue lives matter. Nurses' lives matter. Now people have made memes about it where it's a joke. (laughs) And it's like, no, it started off as something serious, but now it's a joke. Now there is a guy, I can't remember his name, but he has bought out the Black Lives Matter movement. If you guys don't believe me, look it up. I've heard about that. He's bought it out. Bloomberg? Something. Yeah. I don't know. This thing's real complicated. Okay. But he's bought it out. So he's this multi-billionaire guy buying this thing, and now he's getting all kinds of money from it and stuff like that. But it's ironic how now the Black Lives Matter movement started like the Civil Rights Movement in a way. But now it's like, oh, when these grand events happen, like police shootings and cities that, small town cities that people haven't really heard of, it's like, oh, the only footage we get of it online is from the Black Lives Matter people. We don't hear it from anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And then once it gets enough buzz on social media from Black Lives Matter movement protesters, then that's when the news covers it. So now it just seems like all of them are in cahoots with each other. They're just putting it out there to actually separate people. So now people are like, no, how dare you? Those same people who are like, how dare you separate yourselves from us? All lives matter. Are now even angrier. Like, well, that's what you guys get. And Mm -hmm. then other people are just like, what do you mean that's what we get? That's not fair to us to be like, you know, oppressed as people. Now what? Right. So that is what's causing the separation. The movement itself. Wow. Because it isn't actually like... Oh, here, Not you're action. my brother, you're my sister, let's Not all get unity. together, you know? Wow, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit more about that when we get back. That's some really, really interesting insight. We'll be right back on the Live Exchange. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You've accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you, A... 
line things up a centimeter from her hairline. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. No, 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 no. Sweatbands are so hot right now. Everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within. Um. C, look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D, show empathy. Mom, you really don't have... Ta-da! Twinsies! <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. Listen, as a hiring manager, I've got to tell you, the best job candidate isn't always the typical candidate. Sometimes they're a grad of life. Meet the grads of life. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Sometimes the best candidates aren't the ones you're used to. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and, um, and we're talking about um, just the, some of the things that are happening and how we may perceive things similarly or differently um, depending on the, the generations. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about, um, you know, just kind of the social justice movement that's happening nowadays versus how it happened during the civil rights movement. And, um, and there's a lot of comparison that's made. You know, some people have said, oh, this is the new civil rights. And there's other people who have totally rejected that, like, no, this is not the new civil rights movement. This is a whole different type of movement. Um, and what we're seeing is, um, well, in the past with the civil rights movement, you know, there were, there were, I saw a lot of more unity um, in terms of here's, we are, like you said, we're going to all band together and we're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. When we talk about that nowadays, we're all going to band together and we're going to do this together. There's a lot of negative talk. Like, that's stupid. Why would we do that? Mm -hmm. Walmart didn't do anything to us. You know, yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of, you know, um, criticism of the whole idea that we're going to band together to do anything. And so... I haven't seen a whole lot of unity. Now, what I have seen, what I will say, is that I have seen unity in pockets. You mm -hmm. know, so there's there's subgroups out there, and those subgroups are very diverse. I'm seeing, you know, um, so so whether or not it's something that, um, you know, is Black Lives Matter or I'm against Donald Trump or um, I'm for the support of um, the pipeline, or not support of the pipeline, but against the pipeline and in support of the mm -hmm. North Dakota um, tribes. There has been pockets of support for those things, and I don't even know if it's the same people or if, it, you know, they, if, if they, these are just the things that this particular group of people are passionate about. And then it's a very, it's, they, and they all seem to be very diverse groups of people. But I'm just wondering... Is there any cross, you know, are these the same people or, or you know, what's going on? Because we seem so divisive in this time. Yeah. I think those pockets of people are just regular people who are wanting to make a change. They don't have a large enough group to actually make a change. Or a leader. Cause, yeah, because people of our generation are so, like, wishy-washy. They're like, oh, vote for, pray for Paris kind of thing when they had that thing going on on mm -hmm. Facebook. But they're only trying to keep up with what's trending nobody really cares what's really going on mm -hmm. they're just like oh that's the new trend all right well we'll pray for paris too <laughs> and then two weeks later it's like oh man those girls got kidnapped in nigeria wow that's sad well i'm still here mm -hmm. like everyone's so into themselves and nonchalant and non-caring so it's just like now whereas what? like in the 70s there were like serious 
push, you know, movements mm-hmm. that, that occurred, like, you know, I'm thinking, like, the Vietnam War, I'm thinking about, um, you know, um, you know, anything that happened globally, we, people were like, I can't say I wasn't born until the second half of the 70s, <laughs> but there was a lot of uh, momentum and, and just really pushing hard, mm-hmm. and we're not going to let up until this thing gets addressed. Yeah. And, um, and it brought other people in, their kids joined in, like small, small children joined in, like, yeah, my mom's there, I'm there too, I'm on mm-hmm. her side, you know? Nobody's on our side together. We're all just like, oh, I'm over here right now. I see you all the way over there on that little tiny ice, and you're about to melt in, but it's okay, because I'm on this real big glacier. <laughs> I'm good over here. Mm-hmm. But, so, but in all fairness, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, um... It, that The civil rights movement as we see it and as it has gone down in history was not always the way that it was when it was at its height. Mm-hmm. There, there, There's that beginning, are we almost at the end? There's that beginning of the civil rights movement that um, started off scattered, that started off with people in their own pockets. Yeah. And at some point, something had to happen to bring it together. So I always advise people, consider this being the beginning of a new movement. The beginning so. of the new movement is messy. And we have to be patient with the process and be deliberate and consistent with the process so that it can come together into what it needs to be. Mm-hmm. And we have, like, 20 seconds. Do you have anything else to say? <laughs> um, no. Okay. I wore my shirt. That's all. It says getting through the struggle. Get so it. I love it. Hashtag getting through the struggle. That's I all love you need it. to know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Get through the struggle, people. Please we do. have had a great show. Thank you so much, Tasia Scott, Thank for joining for us. Me. Thank <laughs> you. And we will be back next week on the Live Exchange as we talk about with Dennis Ross how to get over the holiday blues. Mm. Have a great week. <laughs> <laughs>